Hi, in this video we're going to be going over the Outlook.com compose and reply settings. So these will kind of help you send and receive your emails and kind of let you fine tune how it works. So I would suggest going in here and checking out the settings for yourself to see if it's something you might want to configure. And to do so, you want to go to the settings gear icon right here. And then when you do that, you're just going to have the basic settings for, you know, change your theme, turn on dark mode, turn off the focus inbox, which, which I like to do because it kind of separates out your email based on what it thinks it's important and not. you got to toggle between the two of them, so I always turn that off. But anyways, we want to go to the View out, All Outlook Settings, then Compose and Reply. And the first one is an email signature. So if you don't know what that is, this will add a signature to your email so you don't have to type it in manually. So I have one here that I typed in for this demonstration. But if you'll notice, we do a new new message. Nothing there. So what we need to do is turn it on. And you could have it go for new messages and also for um, messages that you forward or reply to. It's up to you if you want one or both or none of them. I'm just going to say for new messages. Click on Save. Go back out here. New message. And now you can see we have that signature already added for us, so we don't have to type it in. All right, let's go to the next setting. Okay, message format. So when you when you type a new message, it's just going to have the, the two, and it's going to say who it's from, but it's not going to have the carbon copy or blind carbon copy. So I'll show you that again real quick here. See, only the two box here. So who you're sending it to it doesn't say anything about who it's from and the subject line. So let me get rid of this. So let's go back on there and change those settings. So we could turn on the Always Show BCC, which will also turn on the CC, the carbon copy. I don't know why it doesn't list them both. And then the Always Show From will turn that on. And then while we're here, the default um, format for these emails is HTML, where, which allows you to change the font, the size, make a bold, italics, change the color, where if you were to use plain text, then you wouldn't be able to do so. So we're going to leave it on HTML. And then we'll click on Save to see how these two things work here. Okay, new message. Now you can see we've got the 2CC, BCC, and also who it's from, which will let you, if you have another email address you want to send it from, you could do that instead of your default. So that's why it gives you the from option. Okay, let's go to the next setting. All right, this reply or reply all, I'm not sure what this is for because it doesn't seem to change for me. So if you have an email from a single person and you click reply, you can only reply to that one person. If an email was sent to you and other people, you could reply just to the main sender or reply to everybody who got the email. So even if I turn on reply all as the default response, and then I go here, I only get reply because it's only from one person, but I think this one is from multiple people. See how it has reply to all because it came from two different people, so I'm not sure exactly how that works, so maybe you'll be able to figure it out for yourself, but I just thought I would point it out. All right, next setting. All right, link preview. This is usually off by default, and what this will do is if you send somebody a link in an email, it'll make a clickable link that they'll be able to click, and then also if people send you links, it should be a clickable link that you could click. Click, But if you could also turn on this preview if you want, and I'll show you what that does. So we have this Check Out My New Car. See how it shows this thumbnail and this text here, so it's, it's, it's all clickable, or at least this is and this is. And if you didn't have that option on, all you would see was this link here, which you could still click on. So that's up to you if you want to see this little thumbnail or not. Okay, back to settings. All right, undo send. So sometimes when you click on send, you might all of a sudden realize that you didn't want to send that yet. You wanted to add it, some more information or include another person. It's off by default, but you could turn it on up to 10 seconds. Um, after you click send to undo it. So let's turn it up to 10 here. Click on save. Let's do a new email. Call this undo. And watch what happens when we click on send. 
sending, we have this undo thing. So it's kind of pausing the sending and then go, oh, let's undo it. Then it'll bring you back to your draft here and then you can make your changes and resend it again. So that's a, a handy little feature. I don't know why it's not on by default. But like I said, you could have that sit there for up to 10 seconds. You know, five or it looks like only five or 10 seconds. All right, Joyful Animations. This is more of a fun thing. It doesn't really do you any good whatsoever, but yeah, I guess it's kind of interesting. Depending on the content of the email, it'll give you some animations when you hover your mouse over it. So I'll show you an example of that. So we got this birthday message here. You can see how it's kind of highlighted blue. When you hover the mouse over it, it gives us some confetti. So like I said, you know, it doesn't really help you except maybe a little, a little fun for five seconds. Okay, so let's go and see what we got next. All right, quick suggestions. This doesn't seem to work so well for me. I don't remember ever seeing it work at all, now that I think about it. So Outlook can highlight keywords in the text and suggest help from information like restaurants near you, blah, blah, blah. So if you have your browser um, track your location information, and you start typing, maybe it'll kind of, you know, type in Italian restaurant, maybe it'll kind of pop up something with local Italian restaurants. But I've never seen this uh, work, so I can't actually demonstrate it for you. So maybe it works better for you than for me, but I just thought I'd mention what it does real quick. And then same for this too, suggested replies. So let's say someone sent you an email said, are you going to be there at six o'clock tonight? And at the bottom, you'd have some choices you could click on like yes or no, or maybe and I can't make this work either. I've even tried using the uh, email text from the Microsoft website that they show for their sample, but right now it just doesn't do anything for me, but maybe when you try it on yours, it'll be working. And I'm even using the Edge web browser just to make sure it wasn't a, a browser thing since Edge is owned by Microsoft, just like Outlook. And then text predictions, this is useful or sometimes not useful depending on how fast you type. So what this will do is will suggest words or phrases as you're typing, and then you could t press tab to complete it. And I don't like it because it kind of throws me off my typing because I'm always watching what's popping up instead of focusing on a, what I'm really trying to type. So let's see if we can do a demonstration of that. See how it tries to put restrictions, but I wanted to type restaurants. So if I were to go press the A, then it gives me what I want, but let's say I was not paying attention. I pressed tab to complete it. Now I have restrictions instead of restaurants, and then I have to go back and type the right thing. And like I said, as you're typing, you, know, you would think it would f finish off today, but it doesn't, so I just, this is kind of random what it decides it wants to uh, fill for you. But like I was saying, when it, when it starts filling it, it just throws off my typing, so I like to turn that off because it just, I don't know, it's just kind of annoying to me. So that's up to you, of course. All right, let's discard this. Go to the next setting here. Okay, last we have the Microsoft Editor settings. So if you click on that, you could you know, do the text predictions, turn it off and on from here too. Set your proofing language, and then you could turn off spelling and grammar checking. If you have the premium pay for version, then you could have it actually check all these other um, types of grammar and speller checker. Plus, you also get one terabyte of storage. So, but for the most part, I would suggest leaving these on unless you know you don't like to see those red and blue squiggly lines underneath showing you where you messed up, or if you think you're a perfect typist, you could leave that on as well. So, really, really no reason to turn it off. So that's pretty much it for the Compose and Reply settings in Outlook. There's quite a few of them. So I would just go through and play with each one and see what you want to change and see what you want to use and don't want to use. And then you can kind of get your email dialed in and work in the way you want. All right. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. <laughs>